how difficult managing your time can be and I've had to readjust my routine. So I wanted to share all that with you so that you as a researcher can manage your time better and publish more papers. A lot of researchers that work with us on, on our program Research Paper Mastery frequently ask like, you know, how to manage your time better. And you know, this is a really good question because there are so many things if you're a researcher that are vying for your attention. You know, you, you've got to go to the lab, you might have PhD students to supervise, you know, there's obviously papers to be written, there's grant proposals, you've got to get funding for, uh, for your research, there is pressure from your superiors to, to publish more papers, there's classes to teach, there's exams, God knows what else. And there's this thing called life and family as well, uh, that should kind of be part of all of it, right? Not being able to manage all that properly is, you know, the number one root cause why so many researchers come to us for help because they can't publish papers regularly, right? Um, because a lot of you probably, you know, you might know how to write. You, you might know what a paper is structured like, you know, you, you might have research topics, you're probably good in the lab, but actually, you know, being able to sit down and write regularly and produce all those papers without going mad with all the other work is tough. So that's why in this video, I wanted to show you how I've been managing my time as an independent researcher, a business owner, and also a recent dad. And having a kid has really opened my eyes as well to how difficult managing your time can be and I've had to readjust my routine. So I wanted to share all that with you so that you as a researcher can manage your time better and publish more papers. So let's dive right into it. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers regularly publish papers in top journals. And if you're enjoying this video, then hit the like and the subscribe button. So first, you know, I'll talk about how I've been managing my routine as an independent researcher and a business owner and a husband and trying to combine all these things together. And then at the end, I'll also talk about the recent arrival of, of, our, of our first baby and how that has kind of like created a bit of upheaval in my routine and made things even more difficult. And then how I've tried to manage my daily routine. So I hope that this helps you as well as a researcher to be able to publish more papers and have a more productive routine. So I think the first really key thing that has helped me over the years to, you know, to stay sane and be able to run a full-time business, right? And if you've ever tried running a business, it's, it's tough. It's tough, it's like work 24 seven, right? And then at the same time, trying to publish papers as an independent researcher, and then, you know, having a sort of healthy work-life balance and, you know, um, having friends, going out and things like that. So the first really important thing is to plan things in advance. So what I've always done is I've used, you know, I've used what I call a success planner that allows me to plan long-term goals for the whole year at least. You should even have longer plans. You should plan in like sort of five years, right? But at the very least, you should have clear goals for the rest of the year, right? So you should sit down at the beginning of the year. That's what I would do every year. Sit down and really just like for the whole day, just think about my goals and, and write them down on paper. And then, you know, from these goals, right, this allows you then to, to start looking at intermediate goals, right? So if your goal is to publish three papers by the end of this year in Scopus Index Q1 journals, well, what needs to happen for those three papers to be published? Maybe you need to find three research topics at least, right? Because you haven't got them yet, right? You'll then need to maybe read the literature, especially for one paper, which is kind of in a new field that you know less about, right? Uh, you'll need to do X, Y, and Z experiment and so on. Like, well, you, you get what I'm talking about. You can start identifying intermediate goals that help you to achieve your overall goal of three papers, right? So, so that's kind of like really important to having that more long-term vision and planning because a lot of people don't do that. Like we all kind of say to ourselves that, yeah, I, I want to publish papers. I want to publish more papers, but very few of us actually sit down and write those things down and really clarify what is my number one goal for this year. And then what do I need to do in order to achieve that goal? 
right? So once you have that big goal and the intermediate goals, well, you want to start like identifying actions that you need to be taking in order to achieve those intermediate and then by extension that main goal, right? So for example, if you need to find three research topics, well, one thing that you definitely need to do is to start reading the literature, right? And you need to focus on the newest literature, start identifying limitations of previous studies and so on. And these are specific activities that you want to be putting on your schedule. So I can't stress this, that enough that, you know, while running a full-time business, Academic English Now, and trying to publish papers and trying to stay sane at the same time, like putting things in my Google Calendar, that has been a game changer for me. It's such a simple thing, but like most of us just don't do it. I, I hadn't done that for like 30 plus years of my life. And I wish I had, I wish somebody had taught me that at 18. You know, I would, have, I would have achieved so much more in my life. There's something powerful about it that like, once you commit yourself and put it in your Google Calendar, you're so much more likely to do it. So basically when I, when I look at, you know, my Google Calendar from the last couple of months that you can see here, like what you can see is that like, it's just full of different activities. And the important thing is that there is intention and purpose behind each activity. Because you've got your long-term plans, you've got your intermediate goals, and now we're putting those activities on the schedule, right? And they always have to happen there, right? So definitely commit those activities to your Google or Outlook calendar or whatever else you're, you're doing. Don't just think that you will do it or it will happen. It won't, I promise you, right? Put it on your calendar. Because the beautiful thing about doing that as well is that it marks you as busy in your work calendar, right? So if somebody wants to book a meeting with you, they can't because you're busy. And if they ask you, can you have a meeting? No, sorry, I can't, I'm busy, right? And it, it shows in your calendar as busy. That's perfect, right? Because the problem is that we tend to say yes to too many things, which brings me to the next tip for, you know, for a really good routine as a researcher. And that tip is that you have to start saying no to things. What I found is that in the past, I used to say yes to too many things. And as a result, there were so many things on my plate, so many responsibilities, that it was impossible to do any of them correctly. And you start working too much then, you, you start getting stressed, overwhelmed, and you stop enjoying it. And you also lose track of your priority because like kind of everything is, becomes a priority. But by, by the very definition of the word, there can only be one priority. Don't forget about that, right? So that's why you have to start saying no to things, right? And to give you one example, um, at some point last year, I was approached by a big publisher asking me if I would like to be one of the co-authors of an academic writing book. And this was a really good opportunity, you know, like it's a really big publisher and it would be a book that, you know, would be used in universities on academic writing courses. Like it's a really big opportunity. And my initial reaction was like, yeah, hell yeah, I definitely want to do it. This is amazing, thanks for asking me. Fortunately, I kind of like, I, I sat down first and I remember that principle of saying no and identifying the priority, you know? So I sat down and asked myself, well, what is my priority here? And my priority wasn't to write a book. My priority was to continue building my business, Academic English Now, and to publish papers. And writing the book, of course it would be nice, like I wouldn't mind writing that book, but, it wasn't really what would help me to get to my goal. It would distract me from my goal. I would have less time, I would have other responsibilities, and as a result, my business would suffer, and I wouldn't be able to publish papers, or I would do a much worse job of it. So that's just a one example of like, even when things are very tempting to you, you have to sit down and ask yourself, you know, does this thing really lead me to my overall goal? Is it helpful to achieving my overall goal? If it isn't, then just say no to it right? Your default answer to most things that people are asking you should be no. And you should just be laser focused on your main goal and your main project. That is really going to help you. Now, another thing that has helped me tremendously to, to manage my routine is to make it regular, right? So I, I tend to systematize it so much that I only realize now when, when our first child was born, how systematic my life became when I couldn't do it anymore, right? Because if you have a newborn child, like things just 
don't go according to plan anymore, which I'll talk about in a second, right? So things have to happen regularly, right? So for example, I would give feedback to my clients on the research papers on Tuesday and Thursday between 8 and 11 a.m. And that's it, that's, that's when it would happen. Then I would write my research papers on Thursday morning between 9 and, and 12. And, and it just, you know, it just has to happen on those specific days, always, right? And this makes it so easy as well to, you know, that you don't have to think about what you're going to do next. There is intention and purpose behind each activity and they happen regularly, so they become habits. And there is this phenomenon of decision fatigue that you might have heard about, which basically means that, you know, the more decisions you have to take during the day, it just depletes your brain energy, your attention span and so on. And the decisions that you take, are much worse so you don't want to take better decisions you want to take fewer decisions so like I just eliminated the decision of what do I need to do today because it was already planned and it was regular so that that helps tremendously make it make it into a routine and you've got to build the writing into that routine so I'm telling you from the perspective of a business owner and running a business is is like a really full-time job like I had never done such a difficult job in my life you could work a hundred hours in a week if you wanted to and there would still be more stuff that needs to be done for your business so if you don't plan writing writing your research papers that that just never going to happen right because other things will always be vying for your attention so you have to decide when you're going to write and i would recommend you know depending on your schedule that you do it at least two or three times a week especially if writing is a struggle for you right if that's not feasible at least once a week like it was for me it was once a week but it has to happen and it has to happen on the same days every single week and again, that builds a routine. You block it in your Google calendar. Make sure that you're blocking it not in your personal calendar, in your work calendar, because then everybody else will see that you're busy, right? So with me running the business, when I blocked writing papers on my calendar, nobody could book a meeting with me because I was busy, right? That, that's the beauty of it. And you don't have to explain to people why you're busy. You're just, you're just busy. You're working on stuff, right? On important stuff. And that's it, right? So, so do that and build writing into your routine. This will really, really help you as well. Now, the, the last thing that I want to talk about in, in, in this part of the video is that you've got to also be thinking about buckets of time. So forget about multitasking. Multitasking is really depleting your energy and it's so much worse for productivity. If you don't believe me, read books like Hyperfocus, Atomic Habits or Deep Work. You know, these books, you know, have completely changed my life and they all say exactly the same thing. If you want to be productive, you have to focus on one thing. You, you can't be answering emails, reading papers and talking to your colleague at the same time. It's just not going to work, you know? And if you think it is working, you're being delusional, right? Try it. Try to focus on just one thing and do deep work for two or three hours. And if you do it regularly, you'll see how much more productive you're going to be. If you don't believe me, let me just give you a simple example from my own life. So for the last two years, when I was trying to write papers and run my business, you know, I would just have one day that was devoted to doing research and writing papers. Just one day a week, because everything else was running my business. And despite this, I was still able to do between two and three papers in Scopus Q1 index journals. Why? Because for that one day, like I would focus so deeply that in three hours, you can write more than most people write in a month. You know, I'm not saying this with any sort of exaggeration. It's totally true. When you kind of master focus and you, you cut out all distractions and you just focus on this one thing and do deep work, you can do so much that you don't need to work for the rest of the week, really. So it's, it's really, really important, right? That you, that you cut out the distraction and really build writing into your routine and build focus and forget about multitasking, right? So build those buckets of time when you just focus on one specific thing. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to get some more personalized help when writing and publishing your research papers, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to dive deeper into your challenges and also pinpoint your exact goals and outline a personalized strategy and a plan for you that will help you to overcome your challenges and get to your goals much faster. If this interests you, then the link to schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.